Welcome to the Pilgrim's Project. Hey people, it's the Pilgrim, and welcome to the new S Plus Kibble Farm. Um, if you've watched the tour video that I did where I sort of ran through the design of the base and everything and covered the new kibble system, you'll sort of have an idea of why I've built the place, um, why I chose these dinosaurs and stuff. So I'll just run over sort of the actual construction of it for now. The whole build is based around these five hexagons that the dinosaurs are situated over. Once you've got them in place, there's a hexagon in the centre, and then you've got two lots of basically square foundations running out from each side that the farm's placed on top of. The actual kibble production itself is centralised on the centre hexagon so I've got like the industrial cooker, fridges, everything you're going to need there to sort of store everything, your, your veggies and all the bits and pieces. Um, so that's all set up. Then the second level I just did is a small production area. The whole thing's sort of designed around the, the central hexagons and then you start building concentric shapes out from there with the squares and the triangles and it just depending on, on sort of what patterns you want with the glass and everything it's really up to you how, you how you sort of put it together yeah I think with the with the cryopods and the new kibble rework they're really trying to sort of bring the size of bases down to a, a minimum really and I suppose it's going to save on lag and things like that and you know help the, the servers and unofficial servers run better but I still like building huge expansive bases. Right, I'll go and count every single structure that's in the base and get a full materials list in the description for you. Um, other than that, I'll do most of it with text, like this, just to tell you what you're gonna need for like the next section that's being built. And uh, yeah, I'll pitch in where, where I think I need to. And other than that, have fun building guys. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and yeah, I'll get back to you. Catch you later.
Right, when we come to building this bit where the dinosaurs are going to be housed, I'm just running triangle sloped roofs around the uh, inside of this like hexagon and then I'm going to snap some thatch roofs, uh, thatch ceilings, whatever, to the middle. Uh, just so you can sort of walk dinosaurs out across it and you know get them lined up and then you can take them out later. And what I did, I lined up all the dinosaurs I was going to use um, before I took them in. The reason there's so many eggs there is I, I whacked the egg laying up to like times five just to make sure once they were in position that the eggs had, you know, fall in the right uh, place and everything. I did have snow owls at this point because I thought they'd be okay for the large eggs but I'd, I'd, maybe they were an extinction, something like that but um, I changed them to arges so I'll just ignore the snow owls for now. Got me terror birds, tech raptors, tech parasaur and I've got the other video out uh, where there's like a quick tour of the place and I explain the new kibble system so if you want to check that out, I'll sort of explain more, go more into in depth into why I pit them dinosaurs and stuff. But that should be the only dinosaurs you need now for the new kibble system. And the Therizinosaurus is like the, the smallest dinosaur I could find that laid the extra large eggs. So we had to pick these guys. I found with these, the eggs actually sort of drop out just in front of the legs. So it didn't matter how far down they had them on them sloped ceilings, they still seemed to get stuck. So what I did later, I changed it, put hatch frames in and backed the Therizinosaurus over the hatch frame and got it right lined up where the egg comes out and then just built like a metal, you know, filled the metal platform in. Uh, but the rest of them can be on the slope ceilings, no problem. Like I said before, ignore the snow owl for now. Uh, get yourself arches or basically anything you want really. So uh, if you check out a wiki, it gives you a big list of all the different dinosaurs you can use for the different sized new eggs. Um, and I, yeah, I just picked these guys because they were sort of the easiest to ride in and they fit through a dinosaur gate easy enough. And yeah, I just went for the smallest rideable dinosaurs basically. All right, I'll let you go on with the build.
Right on this section I'd run some water pipes along the top for the farm inside, then run down the wall and then I just used K so I could see underground, just sort of spun the camera around, um, laid them water pipes out off over the cliff and into the water. Here I just wanted the um, to put one of the cross ones in so I could run water over to the other side of the farm. If you can get them to go deeper under the ground and still line it up you can try that. You sort of see here just use K and spin the camera you can just sort of see just below the surface where you're lining them up. And then I put another cross one in here and then it wasn't exactly lined up to the centre so what I did um, I went inside and with S plus now we're getting um, flexible water pipes and flexible electrical cords as well so I just line this up dead centre so the pipes were just going into the crop plot so I can put the taps in run them down there then run a straight pipe down from the, the end of that and then um, I think I used a sloped one from there to go outside and then use one of the new flexible pipes and basically it'll join the ends of two pipes up that are quite close to each other and it'll have like a bit of a turn in it oh yeah I put another straight one in there coming from the sloped one that's coming out you see it snap in then it's got like a ball joint on it you just snap some water taps to the end of these cross ones and then you're all irrigated and it's got 300% greenhouse effect as well this little greenhouse here so that's all sorted out and then what I wanted to do was run water pipes across the base and then down into the centre so then I can have the industrial cooker down there so I've just got some straight pipes put them sort of at the angles um, so I can sort of follow this platform around and then just use the new flexible ones to join them up you can sort of run pipe work around your base now without having to always use this, the straight ones keep it from cutting through things And also it helps with the height of things so like this this wouldn't have been the right height to run you know the, the original water pipes we used to be able to use down so i'll just run a straight one down from that other one up there on the platform put two down here and snap another one you can't see being snapped but it's definitely there and then one of them flexible ones in and there you go the cookers irrigated all sorted out I built a pretty big chunk of this roof while I was figuring out how I'd like the design but it's just the same pattern repeating on sort of every corner so it should be easy enough to do. Get these double door frames in here so I could run a couple of sloped metal walls off them and then sit uh, a sloped greenhouse wall on there then a flat one and then one of the new sloped triangle ones off that and then just filled the gaps up with the triangle glass and metal. On this section where the sloped glass and metal meets there's an extra snap point you see how the triangle ceiling is trying to sort of snap at that strange angle now back on sort of the original modded s plus you used to be able to do that and run pillars off and things you could have like uh, whole buildings like at crazy angles i'll show you now so that's that's actually ceilings so you could snap them around and have a whole building sort of at an angle like that 
have uh, guns hanging off it and things in different positions. It was pretty cool. But uh, I don't think that's meant to be a feature, to be honest. I think that's going to get patched out uh, during the beta testing. So we'll have to see. If they miss it, it'll be cool. Leave it in. Yeah, so you're just repeating that pattern right the way around and you'll end up with that. And then what I did here, I just got some extra double door frames um, and connected them to the ones that are already in place. And then this top section is just like a sort of hexagonal pyramid. Right, and there we have it guys, the final build, all done. It's got a sort of a vibe of that command bunker that I built, I think. Like the, when I was saying like building like the old RTS buildings from like uh, Command and Conquer and stuff like that. So all the dinosaurs are in place, everything's set up, got some fridges and stuff down there. Therizinosaurus, like I said earlier, are over the hatch frames, so the eggs drop straight down. Just because it's funny where they come out, the dinosaur, they get stuck dead easy. And like I said earlier, I've got the other video out that explains the whole kibble system and why the base is set up like this and why I picked these dinosaurs. But the way it goes is the Therizinosaurus were like the smallest dinosaur I could get that, that laid the extra large eggs for the exceptional kibble. Argies lay large eggs for superior kibble. The Parasaur is the... For some reason that lays the extra small eggs. Raptors lay small eggs and... Terror birds lay the medium eggs. So that's everything you'll need. Then the the extraordinary special eggs are the Hesperonis. Basically you need to tame a bunch of them, get them down to a river, get yourself an Ichthyothornis as well, and get that to catch a bunch of um, fish for you and then feed it to the Hesperonis and they should lay the golden eggs and it's the golden eggs you need for the exceptional, uh, extraordinary one chucked a few of them guys down underneath this base you saw the farm there that's all set up and running i did have the titan bow down here because it said that the um, extraordinary special eggs could come from the 
Titan balls as well, but it didn't seem to work when I tested it, so I got some Hesperonis. Just got them down here out of the way. I said you'll have to take them out on little trips out to a river or something. We've got a couple of dung beetles for fertilizer. Left of them on Wonder. And the Overraptor again. Chuck it, you know, fill it full of rocks, put it on Wonder, and that'll give you the um, the egg buff, which you only need one Overraptor in this base because it covers the whole place. Just built this sort of walkways and, and stairs to get to the second floor. And up here, I just built like a, a simple production lab, really. Got some of the cryo freezers there so you can keep your big dinosaurs around. Plenty of storage and everything. Workbenches. And I'll just put some beds over in the corner. There's a lot of glass. And yeah, if you're going on PvP or something, this is, you know, even if you filled all the glass in with metal, it's still going to need a lot doing to it to make it, you know, viable for PvP. But I always think it looks good when you've got like all the light coming through each layer of the base down to the bottom. It keeps everywhere nice and bright as well. Looks good. Um, out here I just built like these, just use them as like landing platforms. Bringing supplies in, doing whatever you do. Yeah, I really like this build. I think it would look pretty good made out of stone as well, to be honest. Stick an extra couple of turrets on it or something, get it looking like a bit of a castle. But uh, there's so many different things you can do when once this plus is started. Yeah, they're actually running a bit of a competition. And the best builds that come out of the beat are if you send all, you know, the, the file of the map over and so they can have a run around it, um, screenshots, a quick video or whatever. They're going to check them out and, the, well, yeah, the best ones they're going to put in the trailer. And the deadline for that competition is the 4th of February. So I am reckon a week, maybe maybe a little less after that, once they've tweaked it. It should be out, and then hopefully straight to console. So all these, all this lot will be available very soon. This is what I was saying earlier about having them triangle windows on the sides. You just sort of see out of them. It's pretty good. Oh, and the generator down there, um, that runs through the whole base, and I just used the new flexible cables as well to make that you know, life a bit easier. There we go, a new S Plus Kibble Farm. Everything you need, all in one place. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, um, I hit 2,000 subs this week and I'm just blown away by that, how quick it's gone, like the last month or so. Um, and yeah, I've just been sort of like thanking everyone for, for liking and subscribing and, and sharing the video around and it's just really helped lately. Um, people doing that for me, so I very much appreciate that. Yeah, so um, if you're new to the channel, go and check out the rest of the videos, guys. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you later.